Good afternoon. Welcome to NATO. We will hear remarks from the Secretary General, the Prime Minister of the Netherlands, the Prime Minister of Denmark, and the Prime Minister of Czechia, and then take your questions. Yeah. Prime Minister General. Rutte, Prime Minister Fredriksen, Prime Minister Fiala, welcome to all of us. Great to see you here at the NATO headquarters. And many thanks for your very strong commitment to our transatlantic bond and for your leadership you have demonstrated in providing support to Ukraine. We just had an important and timely discussion on how to step up further our support to Ukraine, in particular on how to provide more air defense systems to Ukraine. Because the situation on the battlefield remains very difficult, and we have all heard uh, Ukraine's clear and urgent appeal for more uh, support. I'm actually encouraged bo both by the messages I've heard in the meeting uh, today uh, by three important allies, but also uh, by what allies have announced over the last uh, few days. Yesterday, Denmark announced a major new package of aid. The Netherlands has just announced 4 billion euros in additional military support. And the Czech-led initiative is receiving hundreds of millions of euros for more artillery shells for Ukraine. And then, of course, uh, Germany announced it will send another Patriot system to Ukraine, a part of uh, the important effort we are now making across the NATO alliance to step up uh, our delivery of air defense systems to uh, Ukraine. I'm also encouraged by indications that the US Congress uh, may take up uh, further aid to Ukraine in the coming days. All of this comes on top of unprecedented aid uh, already being uh, provided, including F-16s uh, from Denmark and from the Netherlands. But Ukraine needs even more. That is why if allies face a choice, between meeting NATO capability targets and providing more aid to Ukraine, my message is clear. Send more to Ukraine. Denmark is a strong example, providing all of their artillery uh, to the Ukrainians, but also with clear plans in place to replenish national stocks. In our meeting today, uh, we agreed that NATO should have a greater role in coordinating security assistance and training for Ukraine. We also agree that Ukraine needs predictable financial support for the long haul. And we will continue to work on this as a matter of urgency. So once again, dear Mark, dear Mette, dear Peter, it's great to have you here. Please, Mark, you have the floor. Dear Jens, uh, thank you so much. And our main uh, message today is Ukraine needs stronger air defense. Uh, a few weeks ago, I was myself in uh, Kharkiv and I saw how uh, badly uh, the city has been suffering under the constant onslaught of Russia's airstrikes. Uh, and since then, those attacks have only increased in intensity. And it means every day residential buildings, schools, infrastructure are coming under fire. And this is making life harder uh, and harder for the people living there. Uh, and in addition, uh, Ukrainians are being hit by more and more glide bombs launched from far behind the front line. So we must keep on helping Ukraine to defend itself. And it cannot do so without the necessary Western support. On this particular issue of air defense, uh, we see three tricks. One is producing more ourselves for the medium term, uh, looking at what we else we can deliver to Ukraine from our own stocks and uh, purchasing what's available around uh, the world. And here it is clear that mere good words and good intentions are not enough for Ukraine, nor is financial support alone. More air defenses are needed, and they are needed fast. So I'm very happy that together with my colleagues from Denmark and Czechs and the Czech Republic, we spoke with you, Jens, uh, about how we as allies can support Ukraine more effectively. Uh, we are already working together uh, with Denmark and the Czech Republic on supplying artillery shells. And now we need to, need to look what we can do more. 
We need to take another critical look at our stocks to determine the scope for supplying more to Ukraine. I have great respect for the commitment shown by Germany, which announced last weekend that it would make an extra Patriot system available. And it is working hard to get more countries to deliver urgently needed air defenses to Ukraine. Uh, and we will consider the three of us in what ways we can support to this German initiative. It is crystal clear that we will do what is necessary to support Ukraine for as long as it takes and as intensely as is needed. That certainly includes efforts within NATO. We must ensure Ukraine can defend itself against Russia's aggression. And at the same time, we must work to foster a Ukrainian army that can withstand the Russian threat in the future and operates in accordance with NATO standards. In this way, we will build an ever stronger bridge between Ukraine and NATO, because as, as we have said before, Ukraine's future and rightful place is within NATO. But again, the message of today, Ukraine needs stronger air defenses and we will keep working on this together. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you, Jens, and thank you, uh, uh, colleagues, for an uh, uh, important discussion about our uh, continued and even stronger support, military support for Ukraine. Um, this is a support that has changed a lot uh, over time, um, from the very beginning where we helped uh, the Ukrainians uh, pushing back Russia from Kiev. After that, um, in pushing uh, Russian fleet back in the Black Sea and gaining back territory. But in the last month, uh, we have followed uh, the intense war at the eastern flank in, in Ukraine, a fight with um, almost unlimited needs for artillery ammunition. And therefore, the three of us are working very closely together in ensuring ammunition enough. And now we are going to continue. Uh, this um, uh, important format when it comes to air defense. Uh, we have and we are still very much working hard with our colleagues to provide Ukraine with the artillery that they uh, need, um, an effort that has to continue um, and we have to speed up. But uh, as I, Mark and Jens have already said, in recent weeks we have seen how the Russians are intensifying their bumping of uh, Ukraine cities, critical infrastructure, energy systems, and the population. Um, I guess, and I hope that uh, in all over Europe, we have heard Zelensky's call for more air defense. It's crucial. They have to be able to protect their soldiers, their citizens, their infrastructure, and, and therefore they simply need more air defense. And even though uh, we Europeans have already done a lot, we have to do more. We welcome uh, Germany's decision uh, just a few days ago to donate uh, yet another Patriot system to Ukraine. Um, and uh, I think the important question is now that all of us have to put on the table is to ask ourselves, are we not better off sending a few of our own dear our own air defense systems to Ukraine at a time where they, not we, are struggling daily to fight off the never-ending Russian attack. We know we have systems in Europe. Some of them need now to be delivered into Ukraine. And I think the answer to this question is, of course, a yes. Uh, and this is, uh, uh, this is why we have gathered here uh, today. Um, and with this um, message, I hope that uh, we will have time uh, during the council meeting to have a very concrete discussion on how to ensure more air defense to, to Ukraine. Um, uh, I think we have, uh, uh, in a couple of months now, we've been working very closely together, mm. providing what is necessary when it comes to ammunition. And now we have to shift a bit and primarily uh, look into how to, to get more air defense into Absolutely. Ukraine. Thank you, Jens. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Ukraine is in a difficult situation and needs our support more than ever. We are cooperating this issue and working together with Mette, Mark and Jens for a long time. 
We simply want to find new ways how to help. There is an urgent need of large caliber artillery ammunition, air defense systems, and missiles needed for air defense. You already know that our country is trying to help as they can. Thanks to Czech initiative of ammunition, we can already buy approximately 500,000 rounds of large caliber ammunition. Almost 200,000 is now under contract and another 300,000 is being contracted. I believe that first delivers will be in Ukraine on June. We also strongly support any idea how to release more air defense capabilities to Ukraine, which could be a crucial moment of the war. Uh, I spent last two days in Washington. It was very <coughs> intensive working visit. I met with President Biden, Speaker Johnson, and more key members of Congress. Uh, one of my goals were, was uh, also support more help to Ukraine and European security. After the meetings with President Biden and many chambers, many, many members of, of Congress from both parties, I am a little bit optimistic that the aid package for Ukraine will, miss, will be submitted for vote and passed at the end of this week or the next week. I hope that this optimism will be proven right. It is very important for Ukraine, it is very important for our cooperation with the United States, and uh, it is very important for European security. Thank you, Prime Ministers. Uh, questions? We'll take some questions from the floor. I'll start with uh, NOS. Uh. Thank you very much. On behalf of all uh, the Dutch press present here, thank you very much. Um, I understand that uh, President Zelensky is, of course, very worried about the situation and has asked for um, a meeting of the NATO Ukraine Council. Uh, when will it take place and on which level and connected with this? I heard you say that when it comes to choosing between what is needed for countries to provide to NATO or to Ukraine, you clearly say give everything to Ukraine. Uh, yesterday we heard our Prime Minister next to you saying in Parliament that it's not possible to send Dutch patients patriots to Ukraine because of this NATO requirement. So my question is, are you saying that the Dutch could provide this patriot system to Ukraine? And um, connected to this also, um, did you already show uh, Mr. Rutte his uh, new desk as the next Secretary General? Um, first of all, uh, President Zelensky has asked for a meeting on the NATO-Ukraine uh, Council. Uh, we will convene the meeting on Friday. That will be with President Zelensky and then with uh, NATO uh, defense ministers uh, to address the urgent needs uh, for uh, more uh, uh, support to Ukraine. In particular, I expect uh, there will be a focus on air defense, as we have discussed uh, today, but also on uh, more artillery rounds. Uh, following up the Czech initiative supported by the Netherlands and Denmark and other allies uh, to purchase uh, more artillery and then to get it over to Ukraine as soon as possible. I think this demonstrates the value of the NATO-Ukraine Council, which is uh, one of the decisions we made together in, uh, in Vilnius to strengthen our institutionalized uh, partnership uh, with Ukraine and, uh, and to use the Council for consultations uh, and to address urgent matters like the provision of more military, uh, um, military uh, support. Then, uh, <clears throat> of course, the NATO, we have NATO defense plans uh, and we have associated capability targets, different types of forces of, of, uh, of ammunition or weapon systems that each and every ally should have. And of course, as Secretary General of NATO, it's important for me that all allies meet and deliver on those uh, uh, capability targets. But I realize that, at least in the uh, short term, there may be a conflict between meeting all the targets and delivering uh, what Ukraine needs now. And therefore, I have made it clear that 
if the only way to deliver support to Ukraine is to go below the NATO capital targets, well, that's uh, the right thing to do. At the end of the day, this has to be a national decision. It has to be a balance between uh, the increased risks we then have to face for our own national defense. But the reality is that to support Ukraine and to help them destroy uh, Russian uh, combat capabilities also enhances our uh, uh, security. Uh, and therefore, uh, I have stated clearly that that's, if that's needed, then we can go below the NATO capability targets. Then, of course, it highlights the importance of ramping up production, because then we have to replenish uh, uh, the different stocks. Uh, so we also discussed today the importance of getting up production to ensure that we soon again meet the NATO capability targets. Uh, then it's not for me to comment on my successor. Tusen <laughs> Dock. Okay, we'll have a second question from Danish media this time. Uh, yes, go ahead. Uh, yes, Ole Ruber from Danish National Radio and Television, uh, Secretary General. Uh, we saw just a couple of days ago when Iran attacked Israel that you had a very, very efficient air defense system. At the same time, we see that more and more drones and missiles get through when attacks are on Ukraine. Uh, do we as the West have the cap capability of handling two conflicts at the same time, and how are we going to do that? Because it looks like we're going to need a lot more air defense system if the situation in the Middle East uh, escalates, which, which there is a risk for. Thank you. NATO has the capability of handling more than one uh, conflict at a time, and NATO allies have that capability. Um, together, we represent 50 percent of the world's military might and we have uh, strong allies uh, and uh, we have allies with uh, many high-end capabilities including the allies which are uh, here um, then I think that the fact that we now have a full-fledged war in uh, Europe and a new uh, war in the Middle East demonstrates the importance of what we have started to do in NATO and that is to implement the biggest reinforcements of our alliance uh, since the end of the uh, Cold War, uh, with high readiness of our troops, with combat ready troops in the eastern part of the, the alliance, and not least with increased defense spending. And again, the countries standing here, they are really examples of how uh, allies are now adapting. They all meet the 2% guideline, they all invest heavily in new capabilities because we reduced defense spending when tensions went down, and now we have to increase defense spending when tensions are going up, and, uh, and that's exactly what allies are doing. Thank you, Secretary General. A uh, member of the Czech Press Corps. Yes, go ahead. Petr Obrovský, Czech Television. Uh, I've got a question on air defense systems. We've heard recently Jose Borrell, the chief of EU diplomacy, saying that there are 100 of batteries of Patriots uh, available in Western countries, and Ukraine has asked for seven of them. So is this the target you are seeking for? Is it possible to gather seven batteries and send them to Ukraine? And the second question is primarily to our Prime Minister. People in Slovakia uh, started a crowdfunding campaign to, to raise money and to take part in the Czech initiative because their government doesn't want to take part. So is it actually conceivable that private money crowdfunded on the internet could be used as part of this project? Thank you. The first question was that to me or? Yeah. Well, also, <clears throat> um, I cannot go into the exact numbers because that's uh, that's uh, intelligence or that or that's that's uh, that's classified information. I cannot go into. Um, uh, there is less than hundred in Europe. Um, uh, actually, there is uh, significantly less than hundred in Europe. Uh, but of course, the whole alliance has uh, a significant uh, number of uh, Patriot batteries. Uh, but that's also uh, reflecting the fact that the United States, which is the ally with the most you know, uh, Patriot batteries, has global responsibilities. Uh, but the reality is that, of course, we have systems uh, available that uh, uh, is big enough to enable us to uh, deliver significantly more to Ukraine uh, when it comes to air defense in general and also when it comes to uh, Patriot batteries. And that's exactly what we are working on now. So, and uh, about the questions uh, uh, about the Slovak initiative, it's, it's very nice to hear about it. Firstly, I would like to thank all people who are trying to help to the brave defender of, uh, defenders of Ukraine. 
It is re really great to see this initiative. We will check all the options, but this initiative is primarily built as, an, as a governmental one. But in all cases, there are many options how to contribute. There are many fundraising campaigns which can be used for it. It's, so thank, thank really, I, I am very happy that so many people in Slovak Republic want to help and there are different possibilities, but the Czech Ammunition Initiative is primarily built as a governmental one. Thank you. Uh, we'll take one last question. Uh, any hands? Yes, go ahead. AFG, uh, the Netherlands. Um, did you consider the three of you rich countries to do something, the three of you? Or do you want to have a bigger uh, group of people, like 20, that do joint procurements? To be honest, on the... On, on the, the air defense, I yeah, mean. On, on, yes, on air defense, but uh, I stand corrected, eh? so please uh, chip in. But I would argue that money is not the first issue here. We have committed again another uh, over 4 billion, which brings our total to over 10 billion, and all of us have committed a lot of money. So I don't think money is the issue here. The main issue here is to get the systems themselves. And we saw with the uh, Czech uh, Shells Initiative and that, that as soon as it was clear that there was this outlook to uh, half a million, maybe even one million uh, shells, that it was relatively easy, relatively easy to get the money. Uh, the question is how to get uh, the systems. And here uh, we are looking into the European, our European partners, of course, uh, the whole of NATO, but also outside NATO. So this production, it is outside NATO, is in NATO. But I think money will not be uh, the problem here. And if I can just uh, add, I think the message we got from uh, Secretary General today is very important because all of us uh, in the alliance is balancing uh, the needs we have as members of NATO and our own deterrence and defense and all the things we want to do for Ukraine. But the message has been very clear today that when, when we're looking at the battlefield at the moment, we need to deliver more, especially ammunition and air defense, and that is the most important target for all NATO members right now. So with that clear message, I think it will be uh, easier for the three of us, together with the, the wordings from Germany uh, this weekend and, 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 and also the days after, uh, to um, ensure that we will deliver what Ukraine needs right now, and it is especially a defense. Thank you. Thank you all. This concludes the press conference. Thank you.